Bills of Ravenport combines drafting with tableau building, but is it good? Let's talk about it. What does that even mean, Bowers Game Corner? Ahoy there, YouTube! We're back again for another Thoughts from the Corner. I'm here with my good friends, Ronnie, Lucy, and Adam. Help! <laughs> Did that out of order for some reason. That's and wrong. We're about to check out this month's Game Crafter Spotlight game, Rebels of Ravenport. We sat down, we tried this one twice tonight. One of them we played correctly. And in this game, this is a drafting game with a relatively simple drafting game. So you're going to have this main board right here. You're going to have cards down here on the buy row, and they're going to have a certain cost on them. And if you buy these cards, these are going to allow you to do more damage most of the time to a row of monsters that's going to be on the top. Now, this game has variability where you can play the basic version of the game or then you can play the intermediate version of the game and then you can or you can play the advanced version of the game and each one of them is going to slowly add more asymmetrical special abilities on the monsters on your player card but everyone's going to start with relatively straightforward playing field and then on your turn what you're going to do is you're going to decide one monster you want to face you're going to roll three dice and if you get lucky enough to match the numbers on the fighters in your tableau, that's how much damage you do. So this guy right here has got a one sword up top, and if I happen to get a six, I would be doing one damage to a monster. If I had another old dude with a six up there, I'd be doing two damage from monsters. Now when you kill monsters, you'll get victory points, and you'll get money, and then you can take that money after you're done fighting monsters to buy more people to put in your tableau. You can also buy some cards that'll do special abilities, like allow you to re-roll or allow you to do extra damage to a boss or a variety of other different things. And it felt like there was a pretty, that's opinions. We're talking about the game right now. Um, you keep doing that until either there's two win conditions, either you run out of victory points or someone fights the big bad overlord over here, which has 12 health. And that's a good chunk of health <coughs> to get to. And that's the basic gist of the game. Uh, there's going to be a gameplay video up. I'll post it in the link down right up there. But let's start on our thoughts. So who wants to start with their initial impressions on Rebels of Ravenport? You want to go, Ronnie? No? I'll go. <laughs> <laughs> I really... So this game, uh, I'm going to use an expression that my grandma uses. I feel like this game has good bones, but I really feel like it's going to unlock the best game if it gets a second edition so this was a one was on kickstarter i think like four five six years ago oh. and the rules are not up to snuff they're not bad for learning the game i do want to clarify that i had no issues learning the game i read the rules it was very simple to understand what was going on however because there are so many asymmetrical special abilities and different ways that cards can rub up together you're going to you're going to have quite a few times where you're like ah how does this situation play out? And chances are, it's not going to be in here. Now, that's super annoying, but it's even more annoying to me. I'm about to climb on top of my soapbox. When you waste all this space on the back of the rule booklet, and you waste all this space on the front of the rule booklet, instead of having all of the rules that you need. And that, that just drives me nuts. But the core gameplay itself, it's fun. It's easy to learn. It's easy to teach. I enjoyed the variety of asymmetrical special abilities, and I was a fan of this game. Oh yeah, it's a pretty nice game. I will say with the two victory conditions, I feel like it's definitely more geared to defeating the Overlord, or there's like little to no reason why not to go for that one, because it's an instant win, which just kind of takes away from some of the cards that kind of depend on you getting the victory point victory. I or, disagree, because we were down to seven points in the pot, and had two people been trying to and do I that... And I was going to try to get those points, yeah, too, but, just but you got rid right of that, that one way. card. Yeah. yeah, but there's also but also, it's also like a win more, because again, you guys had more cards. You guys could have either gone for Overlord, or you probably would have won the victory point game anyways. Mm. So, and like certain asymmetrical cards, like there's one card that says, like, hey, you double the points of artifact cards. When most of them, at least the ones that we saw, we went through the deck quite a bit, were only worth one point. I will. I definitely agree to that. It definitely feels like some of the asymmetrical special abilities feel better than other asymmetrical special abilities. I, I definitely was thinking that, but then I was thinking, there's a bunch of good ones, though. Like, I thought there is. at least four of them were like, wow, that's really good. But then, so, I feel like all, maybe, because I don't, I don't know all of the abilities. There's but six. The one at I'm least four know. of them are like, well, that's really good. Well, when you yeah. have so one of the really two, good. it feels bad. Yeah. Because I yeah. have one. And even the, just the, oh, if you keep it and you get, like, the A side, isn't that bad anyway? The A side's pretty nice. It gets Wait, you more money. What was, the, what, was, what was your bad one? Uh, my bad one was the uh, the bad thing. <laughs> oh, I don't remember. The one. This was hours ago. 
yeah. the one I always remember is the one that I got was it just like, hey, your victory points for that double, and it's like, well, if no one goes for the victory point victory, my ability is now useless. Yeah, yeah, that one sounds yeah. pretty bad. What's well, it's don't also get, a matter, don't play with that one. Yeah, like so there were a lot of different cards in there, and they did a lot of cool things. Like yes. you could just get. Uh, warriors that that do cool stuff and work really well together with certain artifacts that you have yeah like uh there was the one that had i got it i would have been able to just be like all right we're gonna kill this guy get money and then i just buy points mm -hmm. and i could have just kept doing that but you know you guys pushed it into the discard pile one thing that i want to mention is that i was the laughing stock of the game the entire game but <laughs> i was a stand-up die roll away from winning the entire game yeah. Yeah. twice or no once i think so i definitely feel like the game overall it feels and then you had a stand-up die roll at one point too you had a stand-up die yeah. roll so i feel like there's definitely some exciting moments in here that could potentially be had the pacing felt right to, in this game I, I do gotta say, a, a big negative for me is I feel like the game is very dependent on the cards that come out, um, the lower cards. Because I, I was rather upset that second game that the cards that, uh, like, for every one you have, this does a damage. Yeah. That, those that cards, works. I don't know what you call those cards, but so there's cards that say, because all these cards require a number, so this one's a three, but some of them, and there's one for each die, it says, for every three you have, this does one damage. So if you have three threes, then that card does three damage. And I feel like one of those came up, and I feel like those are the cards that I want. You I also disappointed. You also brought up a great up. point that I want to remember before all of us forget, which was it definitely feels like if you're the first player, you have. An oh, advantage. that's, that's oh, yeah. my biggest gripe about the game is the um, first player has an advantage, yeah. and they do nothing to counter that advantage. And it would have been so simple to just throw somebody an extra this, an extra extra th coins. Wait, they did. They did. They did throw us an extra coin. Remember, because I got shafted. Adam got two coins. I did get. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's just the third player that got shafted. So yeah, I don't. I didn't remember people getting extra. Coins. Yeah, did that I happen? I did, yeah, I did get extra. Okay, oh, wait, no, I did. No, no I didn't. I don't we remember anyone three. getting extra. Oh, that was the yeah. other game we played. That was the other game. Never mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah so I was gonna say three. Lucy specifically was like, no, you only start with three. But once again, I feel like that's the kind of thing that could be easily remedied in a second edition. Yeah, with like this person gets a coin, this person gets a victory point, something like that. Yeah. I will say though, I do agree with Lucy that I think the overwhelming majority of games are probably going to end with someone killing the overlord. Yeah, because it's it's very easy to start building up things, and it's like at one point we considered. I mean, yes, at the second game we did consider going for a points victory, but it also would have been like the people who would have. We didn't even consider it. It was. No one could kill the the boss. Oh, like, yeah. do, do you know any of those points were from goblin kills? <laughs> there were so many goblin kills. And, and, uh, Getting five money just from a goblin kill. Yeah, five yeah. Money but, but once <laughs> again, that goes back to my main issue with this, which is the rule booklet is not as good as it should be because we had that, like, because Adam had this broken thing with one of his cards where it's like, yeah, I can just get five bucks every single turn doing and nothing victory, at all. Right. Yeah. yeah, and it was like, we discussed it, like, we think it's like this, but we're not sure, and it's, it's like, like two or three. Is it a, do you have to have a successful attack Did they deal one in point order of to, damage? for this artifact to trigger? And it, we couldn't figure out, based on the rule book, and I read the whole rule book while we were sitting here. I did too. It's a very easy, quick read, uh, and it didn't have that information in there. Like, yeah, we played that if you, that you attack for zero, like, if you miss. Yeah. And that, but there's cards that say you add to your attack, so and there's cards that say, zero like, plus two attack. is two. Yeah. yeah. So it's one of those. So that's how we played it, and the rule book didn't clarify if that's correct or not. But bottom line, did anyone not enjoy the game? I'm not as enamored with it as you guys are. Okay. It's, I thought it was mediocre. It's nice. It's it's a it's a. I will say, like, it, the second game, it almost overstayed its welcome just by it, a little it, bit. It did. I would agree with that. It's a little bit longer. It's definitely sure. not a 30-minute game, depending on what cards you get. It... I think part of the reason why is because we did bump it up to the advanced difficulty, which then then that made you look at every single monster to say... No, because the monsters do have really interesting asymmetrical special abilities, yeah. and it's not one size fit all. You'd look at this monster, and he would have a different special ability from, from this time to that time. I would say it's probably, it's probably more of a family weight game. Yeah, I would agree yeah. with that. Because even with the advanced version, it was pretty simple. We just had those, it just doesn't have the specific, the rule book as, pretty much assumes you're playing this with a, like a family or like with like not adults. Because it has like, a, it's a simple rule book and it doesn't it probably expect people to ask those particular questions that we but asked. But it's kickstarted, well I guess it was kickstarted in 2016. I just, it drives me nuts because that 
getting back on my soapbox, that clearly tells me yeah. that you did not blind play test this game. The fact that no one came up with that question, and, and it's such a simple, like, there's a lot of cards. Like, back to the example where Adam was able to just automatically kill something. No, Ronnie was. Yeah. Well, just Adam what, and I. We were both doing it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and it's like, there's but a, it benefited me more. <laughs> I don't okay. know about that. I had plus three of, from very, I had plus two from the first round. Ronnie also and won then, then plus three game. shortly <laughs> after that. Yeah, but as far as like how many victory points you had, how much uh, I also won the game attacking guys. Yeah, but, but you it, was close. Yeah. it was it was it was very also, close. Also, we did roll it around, and I would have also beat it on this with the same <laughs> number of turns. And I would have also <laughs> had the chance to beat it. Okay, so here's the ultimate question: the other day I was asked in these videos, if I were to hand you this game, would you make it into your collection? Uh, not for me. For me, because actually, like now, my family's doing more game nights. I would consider it. Okay. Hmm. It's not that bad of a game. It's, just, not, it's, not, it's yeah, not a bad game. I, I think I would take it. I think my boys will enjoy this eventually. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to play with my nine-year-old. And like I said, I feel like it has good bones. I just feel like a second edition would unlock it. Maybe a couple extra cards, some clarifications. Uh, so maybe some tweaks to here. Just especially on, on the text of the cards. There's sometimes where it's like, if you just would have put an extra... I said it, like literally, if you would have put two extra words on a card, it would remedy any... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That, or, I still one, have no idea what that card meant. No, remember that one thing where it's <laughs> like, if you play the advanced version, this card that had this old power now flips over the card to make it weak, make a monster weaker? Like, that should have been on the card. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's a couple of little things, and like, you could probably even do like a nice little solo mode with this, like have like a turn limit. You know, oh, yeah. Okay. I definitely think you could work up a solo mode. Yeah. If you took it also really bugged me that you could attack the top monster on the deck. Was that? I just put it on the board. I don't well, there wasn't room on the board. As we make, the make room on the board. I think it's a matter of you could see the next monster coming up. You know, I don't like it. I, I, like it. I, I, I agree with you to a certain extent. You already had six monsters to choose from in theory. Very divisive opinions on Rebels, <laughs> uh, Rebels of Ravenport, but nobody hated it. Yeah, yeah we got a mediocre. It. We got an okay. We got a yeah. Keep I liked it. it. Yeah, keep yeah. it. So there we go. Rebels of Ravenport. It looks like it might be your cup of tea. Be sure to check this one out down on the Game Crafter link down below. And if you are ever thinking of making your own game, don't be a freaking idiot and go anywhere else but the Game Crafter. That's what I did when I made my Kickstarter prototype because it's they, they do everything. They print minis now. They do custom cards. Oh, they do nice. custom... Like, look, this is a custom board. This is something that you could print off right now. Ridiculous. You double-side this. They're fantastic. Check them out. Plus, they sponsor the channel, so I'm going to be a shill no matter what. But I would be a shill even if they didn't sponsor the channel. As always, if you enjoyed the content, please be sure to click on the subscribe button down below. I'm trying to reach 17,000 subscribers in 2023 Woo! to make it my biggest year ever. And as always, thanks for your time, YouTube.